Good evening and welcome to talk show on breast cancer, an initiative by Integrated Health and Wellbeing Council, supported by Dr. Reddy. I'm Riddhi Lakra, Assistant Editor, IHW.TV. Breast cancer is the most common malignant disease in Indian women. Over 1 lakh new breast cancer patients are estimated to be diagnosed annually in India. While the breast cancer is the most common amongst women that affects mostly in the middle age and the older age group in most parts of the world, the incidence of breast cancer is showing an increased trend affecting younger women and the cost to prevent, treat, manage this chronic disease is continuously increasing. While awareness about the disease is there, it is important to talk about the breast health education for younger women. To discuss this, we have with us today joining uh, Dr. Ullaz Badra. He's a senior consultant and chief thoracic of uh, chief of thoracic medical oncology, Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute, New Delhi. We also have with us Dr. Sanjeev Singh, medical director, Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences, uh, Delhi NCR, and chief medical superintendent at Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences, Kochi. The other panel uh, joining us today is Dr. Amit Agrawal. He's the principal director of an HOD, Medical Oncology, Fortis Hospital, Shalimar Bhag. Uh, we also have with us Dr. Amish Vora. He's a director he and head oncology, Hope Oncology Clinic, New Delhi. Uh, we ha also have with us Dr. Ashwin Phillips. He's the HOD, Medical Oncology, Christian Medical College, Hospital, Ludhiana. And last, we have Mr. Raju uh, Kumar Volu. He is the cluster head specialty care at Dr. Reddy's laboratory. I welcome you all for this panel discussion, and I would like to start uh, uh, with you, Dr. Badra. Uh, like, uh, Dr. Wendy, talk about like uh, you might be seeing a lot of young patients uh, with breast cancer, uh, and uh, we, you, I, I hope you do appreciate early detection. So, uh, like, what do you, uh, what can we do uh, that the most of the young population can be uh, get aware of the breast cancer health? And uh, what are the small initiatives we can uh, take, especially to talk about in, in India? I think what you are doing right now is uh, doing the best that we can. You know, have more education. Uh, people, uh, you know, nine out of 10 lumps in a young lady will not be cancerous. But that also means that one in 10 lumps in, the, uh, in a young lady will turn out to be cancerous. Uh, you hit the nail on the head when you said, uh, you know, breast cancer is a disease of the middle-aged, and uh, elderly and all but young uh, breast cancer in young women is a reality breast cancer in young women is aggressive breast cancer in young women is curable but people need to consult their doctors people need to go to an oncologist people need to go to a surgeon uh, people just don't need to treat them on their own you know with uh, with a lot of covid and all the guidelines which came uh, a lot of medicine was being taught over uh, whatsapps and stuff like that you have one prescription and you give it to everyone. Uh, cancer cannot be treated over WhatsApp. Cancer cannot be treated like this. So if any lady has a lump in the breast, especially someone who has a very strong family history, may have strong family history, I suggest, you know, if her mother has, or if her sister has, or if her nanny has, you know, two relatives in the same generation who have, if she gets a lump in the breast cancer, do not ignore that. Any lump which persists, you know, any lump which is growing in size, a lot of time people will come and tell us, Doc, you know, I this lump was here and you know, mind it, I'm talking about educated people. They'll come and say, Doctor, pain nahi hua tha. So, kyunki pain nahi ho raha tha, to mainne, uh, dekhaya nahi. So, uh, do not scare, do not get scared of your doctors. Uh, make friends with your doctors. Get an annual, get an annual checkup done. Uh, if you have any lump in the breast which is growing, if you have any bleeding or discharge from the nipple, if you're losing weight, if you have lumps and bumps in your armpit and axilla and in the neck and nodes. Uh, consult a local physician and then they will take it from there. Uh, thank you, Dr. Badra. Uh, like, uh, as you said, like a lot of people do not come uh, with uh, just because they do not have pain. So they do not come. Uh, there's another thing that's, that's called fear. A lot of people experience that. Uh, Dr. Amit, uh, I want to come to you and ask, like, uh, we need to remove the idea of fear amongst the people about breast cancer. Uh, so that uh, they can openly talk. And uh, one of the very important thing is education. Education is something that we can bring a change about. And how do you think we can eliminate the taboo around breast cancer, breast health uh, through education? Whom have you asked? Uh, uh, Dr. Amit, uh, you. Okay. I, I... So um, why would there be a taboo? The taboo would be because the cancer has uh, 
lot of concerns with possibilities of death, possibilities of morbidity, and things like that. I think we have, I think we have improved a lot over the years. The results of best ca breast cancer is perhaps one of the best results that we have among most of the cancer, except for perhaps if we remove lymphomas and things like that. But I think the success rate of breast cancer is very high. So what we need to convince us, ourselves, and the community and the potential people and the patient is that it's a highly curable disease. So if it is a highly curable disease, then the fear factor will automatically go away. I'm scared. I'm scared because if I'm going to get cancer, I'm possibly going to die. If I know that if I get cancer, I'm not going to die, it is um, a hiatus of six months and I'll be fine. I'll live back in the society. I will live my life and I'll do whatever I can and the fear will be over. So we need to convey to the community that this is a curable disease. We need to convey to the community that disease should be, should be picked up when it is the right time to pick up. So I think if we, if we educate the community in that fashion, then I think, I think the fear will be gone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amit. Uh, you, you were talking about teaching the community. Uh, uh, Dr. Pora, coming to you in the same lines uh, about in terms of the education, uh, when we say, uh, like, uh, do you think the colleges and the universities are the undergrad programs? Should they also include topics about breast health and uh, for the matter of fact that all the cancers as well? Uh, like, as uh, we cannot uh, do that in the school curriculum, but uh, yes, uh, during the, uh, the college and especially in the undergrad, do you think this can be a change? Like, apart from the medical students as well, like the other students also learn about it. Uh, Dr. Vora, this question is for you. Thank you so much uh, for asking this question. Uh, <clears throat> so before that, <clears throat> about the college education, one thing which I wanted to talk about what you talked about taboo in the society. Apart from fear of death, you know, the fear of society also exists. Uh, we have a term coined as uh, racism. We have a term coined as sexism. Similarly, I think cancerism is not the term, but it does exist. People feel Meri shadi nahi hogi. Even if they are cured of cancer, they feel Meri shadi nahi hogi. Mujhe koi, call, mujhe koi job nahi dega. Or if I am married, my in-laws will not, you know, respect me or they would, you know, discard me from the routine day-to-day -day activities. Many of the families even today believe that chote bachcho ko cancer patients se dur rakhna chahiye. <clears throat> All these things do exist in society today. We cannot run away from that. And I feel you asked a very pertinent question that, and today's topic is breast health education in young women. Now, how young is young? Do we look at high school? Do we look at college? Or do we look at just postgraduates or that? I feel a structured education program should exist across India. If you see the Tamil Nadu government uh, has done this last to last year, and they have found that even in rural area, if they have a structured breast health education before and after, 7% as compared to 69% were aware of their uh, aware about the breast cancer, breast lump and breast health. So I think that is what is required at PAN, this thing. Not only these young women uh, or young women would be educated based on these structured programs. They would be able to look after their parents. They would be able to look after their grandparents if any of them is suffering from cancer. And this program also should include not only the awareness, but examination also the myths and the facts about the cancer also, and what can they do in future to help themselves and help others. That is how I look at it in this uh, amazing initiative, what you have started. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vora. Uh, that's a very interesting idea to uh, inculcate uh, like how we can talk about cancer, the treatment process and the entire uh, like uh, uh, the, uh, like talking about the uh, diagnosis, all these in the curriculum as well. Uh, 
uh, thank you so much for that uh, coming to dr ashwin uh, dr ashwin uh, like can you hear me dr ashwin uh, yeah yeah please sir yeah so dr ashwin like when we talk about everybody is talking about early detection of breast cancer that's very important uh, but do you think uh, that the medical practitioners apart from the oncologists including say the gynecologists nurses and when we talk about the rural areas the asha workers the anms uh, are aware about the process of self examination and early detection and uh, are there uniform guidelines for early detection and the treatment for breast cancer Look at the uh, uh, thanks once again. So basically, if you look at the NCCN guidelines, there are guidelines. But for the for a country like us, we still don't have a national guideline. And the fact that you, like you rightly said, in India, the patients that you see would be slightly uh, or a decade younger than what they would see in the Western world. And it's because they have a routine screening in the West that they have a better outcome because they pick up patients much earlier. So one of my teachers used to teach us, tell us that when they were trained overseas, they told me that. we hardly saw a tumor more than 2 cm size in my training in the uk but when you come here you see the 6 cm tumors and all so that is because one is that we don't have a regular screening and we don't have facilities in most uh, places to do a screening uh, regular so we did a study in our hospital and we also understood that when we offered a mammogram to a staff also uh, on a free year thing to see if they would pick it up majority of the staffs were not willing to do a mammogram it is because of one even if you are on a tertiary hospital also that uh, hesitancy is there uh, why should we do it regularly and uh, there's always a question of how many mammograms you do so nccn gives you an option of doing a mammogram once in, uh, from the age of 40 onwards now india it's slightly more difficult to do it on a regular basis second thing is a younger women doing a mammogram may not pick up these lesions because the des- the breasts are dense so definitely awareness plays a big role uh, but the main thing is to do a regular screening you would definitely recommend screening for those young patients who have a family history especially like dr ulla sir said somebody who has a strong family history who has a first degree relative somebody who had a male breast cancer somebody who had a double primary those subset of patients with the one that you would screen regularly somebody who has got radiation in the childhood these are the high risk patients that you would screen for uh, from an early age onwards otherwise i think uh, unless we develop a national policy which is difficult as of now we'll have to think of uh, screening these women on an annual basis and the thing is like dr uh, amish sir has told rightly is that get the young people involved uh, so this is initiative which looks at uh, making your awareness aware of your own breast so the younger the youth start evaluating your own breast uh, that is the young that is how you take these things forward so it is important to get the college students involved they would understand it better and they actually have uh, are the best way to train this so the guideline would say for the west that you should school could consider screening start screening at the age of 40 onwards uh, india would consider it at 50 to 60 at that age from that uh thank you doctor uh, uh doctor bora you would like to add something here <clears throat> yes you know he raised a very important point about the awareness of dense breast and i was surprised before i read that you know there is a lot of myths exist uh, you know a, a, a floating around about the dense breast some of the some of the states in usa have a law which mandates doctors to inform their patients about dense breast and it is called actually called as a dense breast notification law i was not aware about that but it shows that if your patient has dense breast what are the myths what are the facts about the same and how do you go forward is mammogram enough or do you need to add mri do you need to add ultrasound i think that also is required in india today in addition to everything what sir mentioned about that that is what i wanted to say uh, thank you dr bora and uh, thank you dr uh, uh, philip as well uh, uh, dr sanjeev coming to you uh like uh, when we talk about like uh, like a lot of private hospitals uh, they do have the small initiatives uh, of adding putting up visuals and pa- pamphlets around the opds like when the patients walk in uh, they are visiting their regular doctors in their opd uh, they can uh, see the visuals they can uh, read the pamphlets about breast cancer so uh, how do you th- like how, uh, do you think how, how effective such initiatives of creating awareness is there and uh, and how can we increase that and improve it further uh, to like uh, create more awareness about breast cancer thanks vidhi and thanks for that uh, fantastic initiative by ihw and uh, dr reddy's lab a uh, very good point uh, i would like to break it into three one is uh, when the patient so 
I have, I'm working in Kerala, which uh, has a health seeking behavior. And I'm working in Faridabad where it is utterly obnoxious. So there are two grades uh, and I would like to address that. So if they come to like in Kerala, there's a health seeking. If they, uh, they are very conscious, they're educated, they come for uh, their health uh, reviews. Uh, so I'd like to break it uh, into three areas. One is an outpatient and then in a tertiary care, secondary care setting. So it is important to like we in our institute have added distress thermometer as a sixth vital sign. And every patient who visits in the in the oncology area gets a distress thermometer done. And then there is a different workflow which we um, follow in an oncology setting, which is a comprehensive care where a medical social worker, a psychologist or a nurse sees them first before they are actually seen by the, the consultant. So you actually have addressed a lot of other things. And that is also important other than the visual and the pamphlets and the, the mechanism of addressing and up, appearing uh, for a, a difficult disease pattern is important because you need to differentiate between a cancerous and a non-cancerous at a very early stage. So the whole workflow and making patients comfortable and addressing their distress is also uh, equally important. Then definitely there are visual medias and the temp uh, various templates, and we give a guidebook for them to basically understand what works and how it works so that they participate, plus giving them an idea uh, through visual, through talking about multidisciplinary approach. So it's just not a single uh, physician's approach. It is uh, a team medicine practice, which gives them a confidence that it is. Uh, so th that whole thing being communicated is again important. Second big area is about uh, where comprehensive health checkups are done. So the, we have started a program called NIRAM, where uh, non-communicable initiatives and research uh, facilities are. So we risk stratify any patients who come in uh, are uh, they are done an age-appropriate screening, and they are also communicated. So other than the pamphlets and other visual media, there is a comprehensive health checkup area where age-appropriate requirements are being told to them, and their uh, lifestyle modification are also addressed, whether it is their weight, whether it is their alcohol consumptions, their tobacco consumptions, their sedentary lifestyle, their birth control, their hormonal intake and things like that. And third, since I also work in Faridabad, where um, the, the health status is and indices are pretty poor, I think the community-based initiatives are again important to reach out to people who, who who may or may not have breast cancer. So a portable mammo where, because unfortunately it is a disease of women and in, in India, anything which is uh, women related, they tend to ignore because they, they it's a very male-dominated society. So you need to reach out to their doorsteps and uh, reaching out, doing a portable mammo is a, is a, is a, is a good initiative. Other than that, there could be a home health program. There could be a door-to-door -door campaign. There... So you are uh, your mute. Yeah. Uh... So we have a medical nursing um, pharmacy college people who also do this uh, screening campaign door-to-door uh, -door when the, and the awareness programs plus if there is requirement of any lifestyle modification of air pollutions or diet which needs to be also communicated. So if we tackle it both at, at a secondary uh, uh, or three level secondary tertiary care setting at a comprehensive preventive health program setting, and also at um, the community level setting, I think we would uh, do justice to this uh, important disease. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sanjeev, for that. And uh, like you have said a very important point about like uh, age appropriate. Uh, so just to ask like uh, to the other panel members also, uh, is it important that uh, in India we should only go by like the uh, age of 50 only for a, above age of 50 for a mammography and uh, not the other age group? Uh, should we not focus on the middle age group or maybe the much younger generation, like say in the early 30s? 
so like if you all uh, might have experienced that the more younger women are getting breast cancers in india uh, if if you could uh, anybody could take uh, dr badra if you can answer this uh, like if you understand like uh, Uh, like do we have more younger women who are getting breast cancer in india and uh, should the mammography and the testing should be done only for the aged group of people like say above 50 the answer to your question is yes and no uh, the yes answer is that yes in india we are seeing the uh, women with younger age group uh, having breast cancer uh, typically they say the median age of uh, presentation of breast cancer is around a decade earlier in in india Uh, the answer uh, the second uh, uh, the second uh, question that you asked should be reduce the age of mammography to less than 40 uh, the answer is a lemon no uh, why is a lemon no because of something that dr amish said the dense breast so you need to understand that a mammography is basically an x ray and if you have a dense breast you will not be able to find out the small masses which are there so why is so you know i mean for for a layman why don't you do mammography for a a 30 year old 25 year old female you don't do because a mammography will not be able to pick up those lesions because the breasts are usually dense in a 30 35 year old female why 50 why not 50 so at 40 is probably the right age but if you have a strong family history then you can do an mr mammography sometimes we couple the uh, mammography with a uh, you know ultrasound breast also again the most important thing is you know the three tests one is the self breast examination one is the clinical breast examination and one is the mammography you have to take all these three things into uh, into consideration and not one of them into isolation uh, so you know we all are so fond of saying mammography that we want to get mammography done for everyone no that's not the right thing uh, there is a age you have to interpret the mammograph uh, report normally also look at whether the patient has a symptom or not also look at whether the patient has a family history or not uh, so you know all these things will take so the answer to your first question is breast cancer more in women younger women in india yes mammography for all uh, less than 40 absolutely no uh, in conjunction with your family history in conjunction with your brca1 brc2 uh, brca2 status we take it accordingly meet a physician for that Uh, thank you, Dr. Badra, for clearing that uh, answer. Uh, like uh, telling about uh, like a very important thing. A lot of people uh, do keep asking about this. That should we go for a mammography or not? Uh, th- thank you so much for answering that. Uh, well, answer, uh, you know, Rajin- uh, so I'll just yes. tell you, uh, Riddhi. The one of the most important thing is you know which comes to our clinic is somebody you know young, a twenty-eight year old female or thirty year old female whose mother has just been diagnosed with breast cancer wants to get a mammography done. Uh, you know the only thing i tell her is please get out of my opd <laughs> don't, don't do anything right now <laughs> so a mammography in a 30 year old female uh, with no absolutely significant breast uh, cancer history will not lead to anything if at all it will lead to it will lead to a pseudo satisfaction on her part that everything is all right so a right test at the right time for the right patient is very very important right dr amish you have a point i guess Um, yes ullas you know the, uh, so <laughs> what ullas has said is absolutely right with the but uh, also i think your point is very very valid and ullas would agree on that point uh, in india uh, breast cancer screening has become synonymous with mammogram and i think that is what ullas also wanted to say and i want to add that education of women in india should be in a way where we tell them that breast screening is not synonymous with mammogram depending on the different uh, clinical scenarios uh, you doctor may advise ultrasound may advise mri or may advise just clinical breast examination by a doctor but uh, to keep a cut off of something say above 50 and we don't educate people about the other modalities of breast cancer screening younger women would have a thought process ke bhai cancer to 50 saal ke baad hi hota hai isi ke liye mammogram 50 saal ke baad hai i think that is one of the myth which we need to break and uh, i am sure ullas would agree with that thank you so much both uh, of you like uh, dr badra and dr bora for that and uh, i would like to come to uh, mr raju and ask this uh, like a very important question on how like uh, a pharmaceutical industry uh, like a uh, lot of organizations uh, 
like the pharmaceutical companies are working towards creating awareness uh, about breast cancer uh, but um, we see still a gap is there uh, what do you think the role of the pharmaceutical industry is uh, in terms of creating awareness about breast cancer and how uh, is dr reddy playing their part here first of all thank you riddhi and ishtab for having me here um it's i think it's a very important role uh, because pharmaceutical industry is organized pharmaceutical industry has the resources and most importantly access uh, to join forces with a medical fraternity uh, to play a role here so that's why i think it's important now specific to dr reddy's uh, we have a programmatic approach to uh, building best breast cancer awareness and screening and we are doing it for uh, more than two decades now so we have essentially it's a three part thing we have something called as awareness for life uh, number two is we have partnered with indian cooperative oncology network to educate uh, primary care physicians which that is the first port of call and number three we have an approach to doing uh, screening camps around the country so let, let me give you a sense of scale that uh, that probably puts the perspective here right so awareness for life is done by our um, uh, you know dr reddy's foundation for health education and they just don't do it for uh, cancer or breast cancer but they do it for um, other uh, disease areas as well so uh, overall we sort of target uh, what awareness for life is essentially we uh, we take help of um, um, uh, doctors in every city in respective areas and we have partnered with over 1500 corporates uh, in the country with hr departments uh, and other departments of 1500 corporates and this partnership has been for more than a decade now and um, we essentially uh, gather their employees uh, depending upon what disease we are talking about and get them together in their premises in the workplace and take these doctors to address the common myths the do's and don'ts for what they need to know and uh, really we have annually we do 3000 such meetings this is incredible scale i don't think anybody does that level of uh, and this is across the board not just cancer and uh, cancer oncology would be about 10% of it now my my guess is about 10 to 12% so it would probably come to about 300 to 350 meetings in oncology alone i don't remember top of my mind how much of that would be in breast cancer but i guess it would be significant because breast and lung would be the top most contributors in our country but uh, the point i'm making is uh, therefore we touch a lot of young working women uh, and predominantly our coverage of this 1500 corporates would be at, i i would hazard a guess about uh, two thirds of that would be in the technology space it industry would uh, a lot of corporates there and this is again uh, across the length and breadth of the country so that's afl for you in a nutshell which is big scale and uh, we do it on a an ongoing basis it's programmatic a lot of corporates a lot of the partners doctors who partner with us on an ongoing basis uh, are very well very well aware of this program called afl and we we really feel i personally feel very proud of uh, the scale with the we've been able to get and i'm have plans to sort of double this up to 3 6000 meetings uh, in the coming years the second thing we want to do is uh, we have done this is this partnership with indian cooperative oncology network which is essentially uh, talking to and getting the um, Uh, primary care physicians and uh, you know taking help of uh, the oncology fraternity medical fraternity to for example educate them on differential diagnosis right and how do we really get them to identify the right cases and then get early detection happen so that's broadly the design there and finally it's for breast cancer we also have a lot of uh, screening camps done uh, throughout the year but we uh, tend to spike up like everybody in the month of october which is also a month where we create a lot of awareness so that's in a nutshell i think um, i would like to share about what we do as a company but uh, this is not just dr reddy's i think uh, most of the uh, um, other pharma companies who are invested in this therapy area uh, equally make very good contributions and therefore as a fraternity i think um, there is a good level of work happening but there is obviously room to do a lot more given the incidence and uh, the, the need gap here Uh, thank you mr raju uh, for uh, telling out like how uh, dr reddys is working towards uh, uh, like this cancer initiatives and uh, helping the entire medical fraternity uh, with your uh, like a uh, lot of uh, in innovative ideas research and development uh, thank you so much doctor uh, mr raju 
Dr. Amit, coming, uh, Dr. Amit, uh, I want to ask you, uh, when we talk about the Indian scenario, uh, be uh, behavioral change is very important uh, in any context when we say uh, in terms of bringing a change. Uh, but how do you think we can come up with an innovative ideas to create awareness amongst people, uh, keeping in mind the Indian socio uh, like economic factors uh, and with the use of a social media or any form of media? Again, again, it's a play of education, uh, largely a play of education, but I would like to raise some points about previous discussion. There was a last Tata Memorial study, which is called as Mumbai Mammogram study. I think it's in one lakh 50,000 community people from Dr. Mitra, which actually showed that the breast examination by a physician every two years is as good, as good as mammogram, probably more practical for our country than doing a mammogram. I mean, I'm actually diverting your point and trying to ask from other people, what do they think about it? Do we think that doing a screening mammogram is a solution to our problem? Or, or as Tata did in 1,50,000, that's a lot of people, 1,50,000, that a breast exam by a phys physician every two years decreased mortality by about 15% in people more than 50 years of age. But to answer your question first and to set the ball rolling for the next point, I think which is more practical, is that uh, education one way or the other, uh, be it the social media, be it the one way or the other, like the way you're doing, this is also an education effort. I mean, you need to let the people know that this is common, this is treatable, this is curable. These are the tools to suspect, investigate, and that the therapeutics are possible. I guess that is the answer to your question, which is the same thing we're talking. I don't know whether anybody else would take that ball on um, self uh, screening by a physician versus mammogram. I would look forward if somebody has an opinion on that. Yeah, I would agree with Dr. Amit because uh, I, I think it is a very diverse nation where uh, a more practical solution would be much more better. You can have uh, a mammography done um, door to door, but it is a costly solution. So self examination would be the most and creating that awareness and what you're doing, Riddhi and uh, Rajuji is the most appropriate thing. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Amit and uh, Dr. Sanjeev. Uh, just to add on to your, uh, like both of your query, like I have a question. Uh, if I could ask uh, Dr. Anish, uh, like uh, about this, like uh, we see a lot of healthcare workers, especially in the tertiary level. Uh, they have been identified as the key resources for educating the women about breast cancer. But uh, there is, uh, they do not have access, a uh, proper access uh, in the rural uh, parts of India. And we have a huge population. And uh, we do uh, like a lot of medical tra uh, training. Uh, they lack medical training, proper medical training uh, in terms of uh, cell, uh, cell detection. And uh, like they are the first hand people to approach uh, anybody. So how do you think uh, we can have more innovative tools or strategies we could come up to solve this problem? Uh, Dr. Bola, um, this question. Yeah. So, you know, the, it's a very, very interesting question. Uh, and that uh, reminds me of uh, uh, Nandan Nilekani when he started Aadhaar card in India. Everybody started laughing, you know, 1.3 billion population. Where are we going to achieve and today, without Aadhaar card, nothing happens in India. Uh, so innovative, I feel that, you know, I was reading uh, an article and my figures can be completely wrong. But 80% of uh, even rural young population, I'm not talking of rural old population, but rural young population have access to Androids. Uh, I won't call it iPhone because iPhone is very expensive, but have access to Androids. And today's topic is about breast health education in young women. I feel that there are apps coming up nowadays where somebody, the tertiary healthcare worker, for example, puts a stethoscope on the patient's uh, heart and Dr. Ullas Batra can diagnose uh, the murmur also and he can diagnose the heart disease also. So similarly, something like that, where we, we are not going to live without AI in future. I think that is given. So going by the success of Aadhaar card and going by that we have AI now in day-to-day -day life, I think the two things can be mixed. The tertiary healthcare will have a reach physically and there can be a remote reading of the same. 
and that is what i feel is going to be the future and just to add on to uh, what amit talked about uh, in 2020 or 2015 i would say yes clinical breast examination mammo same but nowadays there are app coming that the mammogram itself will self defined diagnosis close to accuracy of 97% so i feel we need to move ahead yes uh to begin with clinical breast examination is must but incorporating technology in our day to day life is given and we should progress towards that that is my strong uh, belief uh thank you dr bora for that uh like uh, yes the, the the technology would surely be one of the key important uh, uh think people would be looking forward in terms of the treatment of cancer and in terms of other health care as well uh thank you so much for uh, adding a very interesting point here uh dr uh, philips uh, coming to you uh let me talk about like uh, creating awareness amongst the women but uh, it is also important that the men of the family uh, should also talk about the breast cancer health uh, and the breast health so in india it's like uh, yes it is a taboo in india so how do you think in india we can create such awareness amongst the men and we uh, they, everybody talks openly about it and uh, Uh, like when you talk openly about this diseases there would be early detection and then the treatment process would also be eased eased down so how do you think uh, we can bring that change and do you think like uh, somewhere media can play a important role movies can help in that do you think uh, in those lines yeah at the end of the day uh, we, we are still going to be having going a uh, long way ahead in this entire thing so it's important to empower women and also have supportive men at home but uh, the the important thing is uh, this is a sustained campaign so it is not just a one night thing and again if you look at the entire panelists all of us are present different parts of the country i mean i represent ludhiana which is a different ball game altogether uh lot of sanjeev singh sir works at kerala and i'm also for kerala that, that, that it's a totally different game as you move from one place to other so uh, empowering people is an important thing and survivors the people who survive and go through this they are the best advocates for your treatment so Uh, when your campaign is done, if you, I mean, when when I was in India, about uh, the film actress Gautami was one of our patients at that point of time, and she was used to uh, to promote the breast cancer awareness because she was a she she was a survivor herself. So all these things add to it. There's definitely no doubt to it. But the important thing is to reassure people. I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, awareness and prevention, but the biggest thing that we face is the fact that people who have lumps refuse a biopsy out of the fear, out of Of a lot of myths regarding doing a biopsy, for, forget screening in the first place. When you have a big lump, itself, people refuse to do a biopsy. Women keep it hidden for a long time. Men don't support. So it's important that the people who go through this treatment are open, and we encourage them to open up, and we share our experience. So that is a very important part of this entire treatment. And families are educated. Ah, uh, like Doctor Ullas was saying, that it's important that the women don't feel left out or the fear of being left out from the families. All those things need to be addressed. So that's why it's important to have a good team. a psycho oncology evaluation and like dr sanjeev was saying when the patient comes to before it comes to the physician a, a a part of the things are done so in that part also it's important to train the family and encourage the family so they also are aware of the steps of what is happening uh, that is a very important thing uh, yes dr badra you want to add something yeah so i think we have to uh, i think dr amit uh, agarwal uh, hit the nail on the head in the initial thing when he said you know uh, why is breast cancer a taboo Uh, you know, I still remember uh, growing up watching a serial called as Hamlog. In Hamlog, there was a character called as JB, and उस वक्त ना JB को uh, tuberculosis हो गया था. So in those movies at Bollywood in 1980s and everything, uh, tuberculosis was a death sentence. Today, if somebody gets a tuberculosis, you say congratulations. You have got tuberculosis. You just take oral tablets for six months or nine months, and you will be all right. Today, tuberculosis does uh, does not invoke uh, that much amount of fear in us. Similarly. uh you know i lost one of my family relative to breast cancer and uh, you know uh, it it was it was very traumatizing around 2 3 decades back but today uh, ask anyone in my family my first cancer uh, my first reactions when i uh, hear someone having breast cancer or they hear someone then nee, breast cancer theek ho jayega so uh, what dr ashwin philip said was right the survivors have to come out we have to put uh, more stories you know we have to get more bollywood people coming up you know we have seen yuvraj saying Uh, we have saying manisha goyal not that they had breast cancer we have got uh, sonali bendre coming out you look at them you know it's it's just a word cancer is just a word it's not a sentence it's not a death sentence 
there's just going to be a pause in your life for probably four months, five months, but that's it. I mean, that is what we need to tell them that, listen, this is not the end of the life. You are, this is just, you know, just take a uh, stop game, something over then you will be absolutely back to normal. The more survivors come out, the more doctors talk about it, the more patients themselves talk about it, the more the fear. And, you know, now uh, I think Amish will agree. Uh, hair loss is very, very important, but now we have technologies in uh, chemotherapy uh, where you do not get hair loss. The moment to me that that scalp pulling technique, uh, which I'm, I'm sure Amish was the first one in Delhi to, uh, to bring it out over there. And, uh, you know, the moment the hair loss doesn't go, this disease is as uh, probably common or as uh, uncommon as a normal person. People are very, uh, you know, if somebody gets a heart attack, people are very proud to say, Early stage breast cancer, you want to hide your, uh, your face in shame. Why, Baba? I always tell people, you have a stage, you know, uh, a stage, uh, advanced stage liver disease, advanced stage heart disease, ejection fraction of 20%. What are your chances of survival in five years? 30%, 40%. Breast cancer stage one, 90% cure. COVID vaccine, uh, uh, the COVID vaccine that we are getting, success rate of COVID vaccine, 70%, 80%. 1.3 billion people are taking. Everybody in the world is taking COVID vaccine. Breast cancer, stage 1, stage 2, cure rates, 90%. We need to remove the myths out of, we need to tell and you dwell on the positives of that. And then only the fear will go from there. That's my two cents. Thank you, Dr. Badra. Uh, like, uh, I want to again come back to you and ask this uh, very important question. Like, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, creating awareness, uh, uh, like the uh, people are hesitant. Uh, like, we do say that movies also give some. Uh, like, uh, I, I like. Uh, I mean, the uh, we need to bring more stories. You said we need to talk about it. You said, but then people are hesitant about the treatment here in India. And a lot of people do not get a right treatment. Uh, and when we talk about equal treatment for cancer in India, uh, the government do have schemes like, say, Aishman Bharat and state-funded schemes. Uh, so how do you think, like, uh, the private organizations, maybe like yours and the other panel members who are sitting here, they can work together uh, with the government to bring up, like, a proper uh, and help the people uh, for a proper uh, treatment process for the breast cancer. And uh, that also can be another campaign to tell people, yes, uh, you can be treated easily and uh, do you think this should also be one of the things that we need to talk about and uh, i mean we could tell people that there are options of the treatment there are people who are helping you out how can we bring uh, this change uh, so a very important question uh, and to answer this i will first like to say uh, do not compare your treatment to my treatment i mean a, a patient treatment or b patient treatment because breast cancer is not one disease and the treatment for breast cancer also are different kinds of diseases, uh, different kinds of treatment. So somebody's treatment can go on for, let's say, uh, probably uh, some 20,000, 30,000 rupees to treatment, which can uh, range in lakhs on lakhs of rupees. So first of all, we need to understand that not everybody, A, needs chemotherapy and B, even if you need chemotherapy or chemotherapies are different. So somebody may require A treatment, somebody may require B treatment. Having said that, B, most of the drugs which are uh, there in breast cancer nowadays, you know, I still remember there's a drug called a stastuzumab, a very expensive drug. Uh, when it came initially, uh, it used to cost us around 1.2 lakh rupees per infusion. You know, I could count the number of patients who were on trastuzumab way back in 2008 because they were far and few in between. Only some 5% of people used to take that. Today, you know, with, uh, with the support of pharmaceutical companies and DPCOs and everything, biosimilars, these drugs have now come down to a cost of 20,000 rupees. So a lot many people, now I can count on my finger the amount of people who do not take treatment also. So pharmaceutical companies have come out in the support, the biosimilars have come, the generics have come. In addition to that, there are a lot of NGOs which help the uh, patients. Uh, like, you know, uh, I won't name them. You know, you have uh, you have a lot of, uh, I don't want to name a particular thing. You have a lot of NGOs who come to our hospitals support these patients, they take care of their drugs at least. And you know, uh, breast cancer treatment has become very affordable, especially since it's a very curable disease. And, uh, and uh, uh, way back in 2008, when I first came to Delhi and started my journey as an oncologist, 
I would suggest 30-40 percent people did not take treatment with breast cancer. Right now, the number is less than 10 percent. The change has been there. The change has been good. And uh, believe it or not, my first statement when somebody gets diagnosed with breast cancer early stages, congratulations, you have got cancer. Uh, you know, you have a 90-95% chance of getting all right. And that's what I tell my patients. Uh, thank you, Dr. Badra. And I hope uh, like people do accept that thing that yes, uh, the breast cancer is uh, uh, can be treated much easily. And there are a lot of uh, treatment options available. And uh, you should not be worried. And as you said about like how organizations do come and help, we hope like a lot of people, uh, whoever uh, in future gets breast cancer, they can easily get treatment. And as you said, the treatment is 90, 80 to 90% curable. Like, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Badra. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev, coming to you, uh, I want to ask this question. Like, uh, uh, we see a lot of brands doing campaigns for, uh, like in other countries, we have seen uh, they do amazing campaigns about uh, breast cancer, creating awareness. Uh, so, do you think uh, we should also in India come up with such campaigns to create awareness around, uh, like, the uh, like uh, ca cancer and uh, we do take uh, comparisons of the uh, like the western countries that they have such so and so campaigns and we talk about their uh, breast cancer campaigns so what are the initiatives we can do and even like at your hospitals doctor uh, like the amrita hospital if you're doing uh, some campaigns if you could share something like how uh, what, how are you guys working with that so uh, the team did mention about um, a film which could come and uh, i would like to uh, sort of take this corollary that uh, recently there was a, 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 a film directed on a disease donor program for transplant called Ye Zindagi, which got, uh, uh, which was shown at multiple locations. And we also have uh, asked the director and the producer to come in and we have taken uh, the, the cinema theater for a day uh, for all the public to encourage them to come and at least uh, get uh, um, engaged and invested in that idea of disease donor program. So I think similarly, there would be many such uh, initiatives which could be done where we could reach out to the community, both at the higher strata as well as uh, at the community level. The another thing is just like a multidisciplinary team, uh, which is so beautifully done as a tumor board setting, which is uh, disease management groups in oncology, there are many multidisciplinary team uh, which are helping for cancer patients. So pharmaceuticals industry is putting together. There is a prime minister's chief minister relief funds. There are other uh, associations, the bigger associations, which are also coming forward and uh, chipping in. So uh, as Dr. Olas was mentioning, the, there are different therapies. So some takes care of chemotherapy, some takes care of radiation, some takes care of hormones, some takes care of surgery, some take, takes care of uh, breast reconstruction. So a multidisciplinary uh, act also should be built in uh, to, to support uh, these patients who have cancer. And again, the, the campaign could be uh, just like uh, an age-appropriate screening for breast, the campaign for colon, for prostate, for lung, for head and neck, all are age-appropriate. And then there is a lifestyle modification which is required for almost all of these cancers, including breast. So that prevention and the lifestyle modification again would be again important there are lots of campaigns with marathons with cyclothon with the ray of hope creating champions creating road shows uh, uh, creating awareness on quality of life creating awareness on the, uh, vocational rehab like uh, in, in our setting in in kochi where we have this 1350 bed hospital Everything is done by our own people and we have set up a tailoring unit which is run by breast cancer survivors. So giving them an opportunity to one, take the treatment, complete it and also uh, complete it with the vocational rehab that is that uh, that also help. So I think as, as a society, uh, we need to sort of come together, devise something which is which is workable, devise something which is reachable. And I would again say that India is a very diverse nation. So let's not just talk about tier one. We have to talk about reaching out to these tier twos and villages uh, because many of these cancers lie there and uh, keep creating that awareness. Uh, 
thank uh, thank you doctor uh, so much uh, for uh, telling about like your campaigns what you are doing internally and we hope like your such ideas can also help the other uh, group of hospitals and plus uh, overall in india uh, to create a better awareness about breast cancer uh there's a very important and interesting question what i'm thinking about for very long dr amish i want to ask you and dr badra as well uh, uh we spoke about the taboos we, do, we spoke about the breast health and the breast cancer uh doctor but there is still there is a thing in the women here in india they are still hesitant to get examined by the male doctors and get treated by the male doctors uh, in, in terms of the breast cancer so have you experienced such thing and uh, like also do you think in capacity building we need more women on colleges for breast cancer uh, dr bora <clears throat> thank you for asking that question uh, yes and no uh, the answer to your question is uh, yes because you come across from time to time uh, where uh, women are more comfortable if a, a female doctor examines them and i think <clears throat> every hospital has a provision for uh, a female <clears throat> oncologist who is available all the time uh, who can check in case if the patient uh, is not comfortable uh, in addition to that do we require a female uh, oncologist more in india i think you know that that's not the question to ask like i i uh, my daughters uh, they always say ke papa there should be equality between uh, male and female i said no why are you asking for equality ask for what you deserve you should get if if somebody is more deserving then the male counterpart should get more so there is nothing like equal number or more number of female medical on or female oncologist i think more and more uh, children should be educated and those who are interested should become oncologist and the sex divide would automatically go away uh, but one thing which i wanted you know uh, to put point here is that <clears throat> in india one of the biggest challenge rather than a female oncologist examining is decision maker uh, knowledge except for patient everyone else in india is a decision maker in the family patient will never ever decide for herself and why i say herself because we are talking of breast cancer uh, 99.9% are females uh, so i think the decision makers education is the most important challenge which india is facing right now uh, females themselves are reluctant one centimeter tumor as ullas mentioned more than 92 93% cure rate they won't go to anybody so i feel that one of the other innovative is that these young brigade of women they, if they are educated about the breast health probably they are the first step to go to their mothers and grandmothers and say ke mujhe batao aapko koi problem hai to let me help you and i think that's where it goes and that's how i think we should go for uh thank you dr bora uh, dr badra if you would like to uh, add a point here no not all i think both uh, both amish and uh, i have got two daughters so we are definitely champions for uh, women equality uh, but i totally agree with uh, dr amish's point of view i think uh, uh, the talk of a male versus female doesn't really come uh, you know the the person who is more competent should come and i i really hope that we see much more number of people uh, because uh, having said that uh, you know uh women are more uh, in delhi i think things are not as uh, bad in corporate hospitals it's not that that women will not get examined by you but yes if i go to tier 2 tier 3 and rural india that this, this will be an issue so it will be nice to have uh, you know uh, people whom you can compare to and all so any plain uh, mbbs doctor also should be uh, you know you initially asked a question about um, educating uh, people in the uh, post and the graduates and everything over there i think oncology is a, as a subject should be taught in mbbs also you know uh, to me uh, when i was in mbbs oncology uh, even at the end of mbbs meant death if there was uh, one subject that i didn't read in my pharmacology that was uh, oncology one subject i didn't in pathology was oncology it was like bahut boring hai yaar sab mar jate hain karke that uh, that is the thing that is the education which the, even the mbbs doctors needs to have that that examination of a women you know screening the basic thing i am very sorry to say forget uh, general public even a plain mbbs doctor i can see some lot of time we see 
दिल से नॉर्मल सेस्ट है कुछ नहीं होगा ये ले लो वो ले लो सो इवन अ नॉर्मल डॉक्टर शुड बी एबल टू पिकअप अ लम्प इन द ब्रेस्ट डू अ बेसिक थिंग एंड देन रेफर द पेशेंट टू अ हायर सेंटर Uh, yes, Doctor Badra, you are really right about that. Like, yes, the normal MBBS students should also be aware about the basic uh, screening and basic uh, self protection uh, of uh, breast cancer. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, uh, Mr. Raju, coming to you, uh, like a very important question in terms of the research and development your team has been doing. Like, I want to ask him that like cancer is one of the very important and concerning concerning factor in India. Uh, how do you think uh, uh, like your research and development uh, at dr reddy's uh, in the future like maybe in the next coming decade uh, help uh, the country uh, to help provide better solutions for cancer sure no i think uh, it's a very important question uh, the, some of the cancers like breast cancer uh, equally relevant for us as a country so we look at it at three levels um, number one is how do we make uh, drugs more accessible uh, dr batra talked about uh, trastuzumab and bisimilars for trastuzumab uh, that's a very important agenda that we have we have uh, state of art uh, a biologics uh, facility r&d and manufacturing facility in hyderabad um, and that's basically dedicated towards figuring out how do we make uh, drugs more accessible more accessible we spend a lot of our r&d rupees on making drugs more accessible so that's very important agenda for us number 2 is uh, bringing innovation to the country you know india unfortunately uh, and pharmaceuticals included uh, haven't been at the cutting edge of breakthroughs as far as new drug discovery is concerned so the next best thing is to essentially look at what are the drugs which are very relevant for indian population and um, uh, you know work with them at pre clinicals or run the clinical trials in india uh, get their approvals uh, and get the innovation to india uh, even if it starts with uh, a fraction of the patients but that is still uh, important as, as uh, doctors and the medical fraternity get used to this new regime of treatment so that that remains our number that is our number two priority and number three which we haven't gone to market yet but uh, this is in the r and d phase is we have our 100% subsidiary firm called origin discovery based out of bangalore um this origin discovery works with several innovative companies across uh, uh, across the globe and some of the uh, work that now we are beginning to do is on india focused uh, cancer research um and i'm very happy to share with you that we have a couple of molecules there um which are uh, in mid stage i would say phase 2b Uh, type of a stage but uh, that is uh, we continue to be driven by the passion of our founder dr late dr anjiriddy who always dreamt of uh, bringing the first uh, you know discovery drug and unfortunately we also lost him to cancer so this global oncology is a big priority for us and therefore origin discovery is spending a lot of their effort and money on uh, working on some of the assets and we hope that we'll be able to bring them to market so these are the three ways uh, um, you know i want to talk about the fourth one although not right now in solid tumors in blood cancers in liquid tumors uh, we are one of the uh, three companies i think which is working on car t cell therapy today and as new research emerges on um, on solid tumors uh, and breast cancer i'm sure is going to be one of them uh, we would definitely want to be one of the first companies that would that should bring therapy to in, the, in india and this has uh, at least in liquid cancers um, the the results look pretty attractive um in in with car t cell so the range of options uh, as you can see the first priority is to make what is proven more accessible through biosimilars number two is what is approved or what is working or recently launched or about to be launched in the western world like especially america bring innovation to india we're looking at uh, us japan type of um, markets where such products are being launched or to be launched how do we access that uh, uh, those drugs to a country Uh, recently for example we have partnered with pfizer and launched a drug called palbocyclic the second innovative brand just to expand the access for this drug and the third one third and fourth ones uh, are more in the innovative research space overall we commit significantly lot more uh, rupees on r and d we, we spend almost about 8 to 10% or 8 to 12% depending on the year on r and d which would be amongst uh, the highest uh, in indian pharmaceutical companies consistently spending on r and d 
uh, thank you, Mr. Rajiv, for uh, telling out that. And I hope uh, Dr. Reddy could be doing a great job and in terms of the research and development and uh, providing a better solutions for the cancer patients and the treatment. Uh, Dr. Bora, you want to ask something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Riddhi, thank you so much. I wanted to thank uh, IHW and Dr. Reddy for giving such an uh, you know amazing opportunity to all of us. Uh, I think you should continue doing this. And this was very informative to me. I l always learn whenever Dr. Ullas Batra is there. And But uh, on jokes apart, uh, this was amazing. Uh, unfortunately, I'll have to leave. So I thank all of you and uh, we'll meet again. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, all, almost coming to an end, I would like to ask uh, whoever is available here, uh, Dr. Sanjeev, starting from you, uh, just uh, like three takeaway points uh, about creating awareness amongst the young women and the young generation here. I think it is important again to uh, focus on prevention. So health promotion, healthy diet, exercise, uh, okay. avoiding alcohols, hormone therapies and other is important. Second would be early detection and timely diagnosis. So a lot has been already said. And plus, uh, once it is uh, detected, a comprehensive breast cancer management would help. Uh, Dr. Badra, uh, your uh, closing remark. I think um, a nice session, first of all, a very uh, innovative and a very different kind of discussion rather than the scientific discussion that we do. Uh, my message is uh, for a breast cancer patient or a caregiver or a healthcare professional will be a education, education, education. Uh, you can't, uh, you know, uh, you can't, there is no substitute to education. Second is innovation. Uh, innovation cannot, uh, may not only be to future, you know, I mean, we have horses for courses. Innovation can be from as great as AI, what Amish said. To uh, a screening mammography and training the Anganwadi and the AM workers. Uh, to creating a like you know a mohalla clinic or maybe a, some kind of a doctor who is expert only at this and the third thing which is more important from my point of view is uh, you know uh, people should come out let's not make this a taboo the more you speak about it the more you come open about it the more we have discussions like this and you know sitting in the comforts of our drawing room and thinking chalo, cancer ho gaya tha. Uh, life is not going to stop over there let's just you know take a short uh, pause it's just a sabbatical that i'm taking from my life I think that's the most important thing for me. And honestly, um, even if you don't want to plan that way, if it's not a sabbatical life, will you know, even if you are a breast cancer patient and you have a very realistic attitude towards your life, you are still going to get all right. <laughs> you know, you you can you can pass through that six months of your life. There's a good ninety percent chance that you will be absolutely all right. So you just might as well smile and make others smile and uh, get on with it and come back far stronger. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Batra. Uh, uh, Mr. Raju, your uh, takeaway point. I think uh, a lot has been covered, uh, but I, I am pretty uh, uh, enthused by some of the points Dr. Bora talked about um, uh, younger women in the family helping out, uh, you know, older women uh, in self examination. Uh, and awareness, I think one such forum, I think IHW, thank you so much for doing this. Maybe we can scale up these sort of things. And, and I think also like the idea about uh, using celebrities because uh, India definitely get influenced by celebrities, whether it's Bollywood or cricketers. Um, and we can do a lot more in breast cancer. Uh, uh, thank you so much, everyone. And on behalf of the IHW Council, I would like to thank all the doctors uh, uh, who have joined here the, for the panel session and uh, taking your time, special time uh, after your work hours uh, to talk about this very important topic. And uh, like, uh, I would like to thank everybody. Dr. Badra is here. I would like to thank him. And also uh, doc, uh, Dr. Sanjeev, uh, who's here, I would like to thank him as well and the, all the other panel members as well. And uh, Mr. Raju, uh, like on uh, half of the uh, IHW Council, a special thanks to you and uh, your team and uh, the Dr. Reddy's team uh, for uh, taking this initiative to talk about this very important topic and creating awareness about it, collaborating. And uh, maybe in the future, we would be talking more about breast cancer health and the other healthcare problems as well. Thank you so much. And I hope all we continue creating awareness, all of us create awareness and educating men and women and the younger generation about good health. Uh, thank you all for joining. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.